us, we appreciate our God, and here we are again on a Sunday morning in church this youth day. Truly, truly, our God is a good God. I'm going to ask us to stand now and we sing our song of prayer. God
Charlotte in the week. Do it one more time. Amen. Let's welcome now today's Board of Leaders, Sister Catherine. Good morning, church. Are you happy?
are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the only wise Lord, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. God, I come to you graciously, thanking you for another day of blessings and protection in our lives. Thank you for life, for strength, and for daily bread. Lord, we bring the sacrifice of praises into your house. The scripture says in Psalms 100 verse 4, that we should enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We must be thankful unto you and bless your name. Father God, your word admonishes us to honor our Creator in the days of our youth. So please help us to navigate through the challenges of life and to resist the enemy. Bless the word and your servant who shall bring it forth. Help us to apply it to our daily lives. Bless our youth leaders and all who will participate in the service today. May we experience the sweet presence of your Holy Spirit and the pleasures at your right hand. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name.
God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone, my steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish, when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride compasseth them about as a chain. Violence covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak lovely. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walketh through the earth. Therefore his people return hither, and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they said, How doth God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly, who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain, and washed my hands in innocence. For all the day long have I been plagued, and chastened every morning. If I say, Behold, I shall offend against the generation of thy children. When I learned to know this, it was too painful for me. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I their end. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou castest them down into destruction. How were they brought into desolation, as in the moment? They are utterly consumed with terrors. As a dream when one awaketh, so, O oh Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their enemies. Thus my heart was grieved, and I was pricked in my brains. So foolish was I, and ignorant, I was as a beast before thee. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast folded me by my right hand. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For lo, they thy heart from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go abhorring from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God, that I may declare all thy works.
God has provided each and every one of us with blessings over our lives, with family, food, shelter, clothing on our back, cars to drive, and we shall give thanks to him because of these blessings. So stay with us. He is my daddy.
here today in this first new Sunday in this new year and of course this new decade. Can you give a bit more volume please? Thank you. I want to acknowledge the presence of our national seal, Bishop Dr. Franklin and Ferguson, his wife, Minister Dr. Rovina Ferguson. General Presbyter Emeritus, Bishop Dr. Bryce Thompson, his wife, Teacher Clara Thompson, former National Seal, Bishop Dr. Dan B. Browning, and his wife, Minister Jacqueline B. Browning, Bishop Rick, President today, Bishop Cephas and his wife, Bishop Ben and his wife, the ministry as a whole, church. Members, those who told me and prayed the good right there. There's a wonderful family that's here today who we will make mention of in particular, and especially later in the service, brothers and sisters in Christ. I greet you on behalf of my wife, my wife, my friend and colleague, Bishop Woodley, who is out of country, and his beloved wife, Sister Nick. I am so delightfully pleased proud of my young people and to see that you are coming into your home. Would you stand please? <laughs> okay, okay, the audience. This is the future of our church. People like these precious young people that stand in a place like this and I'm old, decrepit, and exist no more. Then I'm in heaven. These are the people who will lead our church. Let's praise the Lord one more time. And in prayer this morning, we mentioned to them that along the way, you will make mistakes, you will make slip ups, but we make provisions for that. And it's called training, it's called mentorship, and whatever else we can. Bring them into what God will have them to become. I'm not only proud of you, I'm proud of your parents, because your parents are now to this church to help in your development and formation. So God bless you. We appreciate your presence in this place today. Would you bow? And Father, we thank you. We bless you, we love and adore you. We exalt you. You are God. Beside you, that none of you. We take these moments and opportunities to stand before your people very seriously, very sacredly, because we recognize, Lord, that if only for this moment in time, if only for this moment in a day, the position does, Lord, to speak as an oracle. And so we humble ourselves and we submit ourselves before you. As I stand here today, help me, Lord, that I have not seen you that you have seen. As I speak, that I have not heard you that you have heard. Lord, you can bring us to challenge and to change us. So help us, Father, in leaving this place to be. You're not simply, simply receptive and responsive to what you will see. We bless you again in Jesus' name. The Lord's people said, Today's theme. I went into the sanctuary of God. It presents perhaps for some a theological challenge because the writer of this psalm, Asaph, saw an imagery that pained him, it cost him some frustration. He saw, and this is my preamble to the sermon, he saw the children of Israel, God's covenanted people. He saw that God was taking care of them. He also saw that God was taking care of the pure in heart. As far as Asaph was concerned, this was a normal pitch. 
But then he saw in that same scenario, he saw God also taking care of the wicked. And he came face to face, as it were, with the prosperity of the wicked. This cost him no easy, or this created a lot of questions for him. And as we will see, it was not until he went into the sanctuary of God that his perspective changed. So I, I pray that God that help us today to understand the theology here presented. That God can bless whomever he chooses to bless because he is God. We don't set standards or conditions. God sets standards and conditions. We fall in line and we are submissive. The philosophy behind much of what we see as prosperity in our world is based on greed and an insatiable desire to have more than enough. Prosperity and riches are seductive. They can make a simple life complicated and an easygoing individual transformed into a self-absorbed person who lacks morals in his quest to get more. This was the view of the wicked that the psalmist in this psalm or in Psalm 73 had to grapple with. To be certain, everyone that God allows to amass wealth and riches is not necessarily a dishonest person bent on getting as much as he can with little or no regards for others. But the scripture has something to say about those whose road to prosperity is not honorable. In Psalm 73 verses 1 to 12, I want to read as you follow. Truly, God is good to Israel, even to such as are but as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped, for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bounds to their death, but their strength is full. They are not in trouble, this is the wicked, the prosperous wicked. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride compasses them about as a chain, violence covered them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness, they have more than heart. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth. Therefore, his people return hither and waters of full cup are wrung out of them. And they say, they say, how does God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. In verse 1, the psalmist makes this statement. Truly, God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. Here was Esau admitting that God was good to Israel and not only to them, but to all those of a clean heart. God 
is a God of covenant. In this instance, he was being good to Israel because of the promise he made to Moses. But it is also a fact that God is good to those who have a clean heart. In other words, serving God has its benefits. Sometimes people make us look unsophisticated, unloved, as if we are wet behind the air because we call ourselves Christians. But you can serve God in the excellence of your calling and your avocation because God transcends everything that we do. God can work with the unleavened and God can work with the brilliant. God can work with the poor and God can work with the rich. God can work circumstantially and God can work methodically. God can do what he wants to do because he is God. Praise you, Jesus. Sometimes we are tempted to believe that God only blesses those with whom he has a covenant. However, this method will prove that God can bless whom he chooses. Whether it is his covenant people, the clean in heart, or even the wicked. Look at someone and say the wicked. And as you call them wicked, just look and say the wicked. And so, in this verse, Asa had no cause for concern that God would bless his people and those who submit to his leadership. However, Asaph had a serious problem with the prosperity of the wicked. He could not understand how God would allow them to be blessed. Perhaps some of you here today may be in the same mindset. How is it that the wicked seem to prosper, but you are always on the rough side of the mountain? How is it that you seem to be struggling? On your neighbor who does not know Jesus Christ as Savior, can pay all of his bills. Can take annual vacations. Am I talking to anyone in this place? Can live the best life. And you as a Christian, you miss mortgage payments. You can't pay sometimes the children's school fee. This, the optics is not good. And so Asa almost lost his way because his eyes were on the prosperity of the wicked instead of God who truly provides for his children. Take your eyes off wicked people. Hallelujah. The wicked is not your standards. The wicked is not the barometer by which we measure God. Hallelujah. He is God. And he provides. Regardless of what the external environment is producing, I just love serving God. I love when God can take nothing and make something. I love when God can take confusion and bring order. I love that God can work without any assisting or assistance of anybody else. He is God. Would you raise your hand and give him praise? He is God. Is God. You, you remember some of the situations and things you came through and you wondered how, how these things happened. But it was God. It was God. It was God. It was God. How is it that you were able to see your way through? It was God who gave you the ability to navigate the rough seas of life. It was God. Keep your eyes on wicked men. And so Asa was here headed in the wrong direction. Here's what he says. He says, but as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had been nigh slipped. This was no sin on his part, you know. He didn't go out and do something wrong. He was just simply looking at the wicked. And looking at the wicked brought him this close to bad side. God's man. This was God's man. This was God's man. 
Scotsman. He says, well, I was envious at the foolish, and this word foolish in the original mean boastful. You know, some people are pompous and arrogant. They're not just rich, some make it, they're just not rich, but they're rich and they're very arrogant and they like to show off. You know, when they walk into a place, they, they, they take all the oxygen with their arrogant self. But am I, am I trying to help us this morning? You probably won't show but I think you'll get this message. God has given them something, or allowed them to have something. But they don't know what it is to be pious. They don't know what it is to be humble. They are offensive to even being in your company without saying a word. You can look at them and you can see it, feel the arrogance and the pridefulness. And the man of God said, this almost caused me to backstab. That, wicked, that the wicked appear to be getting a free pass, while the righteous have to toe the line. This did not make sense to him. This was something that he could not wrap his head around. We live at a time when the scholars, the hearers, they say it's on such like love to find or love to bring our inconsistencies and beat us with our inconsistencies. If you love God, how come this is happening to you? If, help me here, or should I use the, should I use the hand here? I'm getting this intimate at time. Okay, here, here, here's what he's saying here. The naysayers of such life love to find what they consider as its inconsistencies in our walk with God. Here on one hand, God who promises supply on the needs of his people apparently allowing the wicked to prosper. As Christians, if we are not careful, we will begin second-guessing second God in matters such as this. If we are not careful. If we are not careful. Um, look at man selling numbers and buying numbers. Have plenty of money. People who are doing illegal and illicit stuff, and they seem to have every creature comfort in their bed and corner. But sometimes righteous cars are breaking down, can't pay our rules. Am I talking to anyone this morning? We, we try to make ends meet. We seem to have sicknesses. Can't get rid of. Our children seem to be all over the place. This is the stuff on which discouragement is made. This is the thing that 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 that, that caused Job's wife to say, "Why don't you curse God and die? You right here, serving God and doing all this stuff. We look at our children." Look at our wealth, look at our property, look at our business portfolio. But we must look to God in all things. Hallelujah. And we must recognize that when we commit and submit to God, He's able to keep us. That's the test of the believer. It's understanding that what God begins in us, God is capable to complete. Hallelujah. Sometimes we judge God.
Thank you, Jesus. The wicked were offending God and the people generally within clear view. They didn't, they didn't even hide their wickedness. They were conceited and they did not even cease from their wicked ways. Here's what the Bible says. Hallelujah. This is 49. For there are no bonds in their death. In other words, no pain. This word bond means pain. They died peacefully. You hear it on the radio. They died peacefully, surrounded by family and friends. So help me. Jesus, the priest, is right to us this morning. It says, but their strength is full. Their strength is full because the things of life, they have mastered those things in their prosperity. For they are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Nine chief magistrates do hardly see the prosperous wicked come before you. This is what this word says. They're not in trouble as other men. They're not plagued like other men because they know how to get around the things. They can wash and launder money and they can buy friends and they can buy influence. This message can be balanced in a little while. But I'm trying to help us here. So, 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 so that you don't be sad Christians in 2020. You have cause to smile and cause to praise God and to worship God. Let your wife, let your husband get on your case making you feel as if you are fair and spouse. No, you're not a fair and spouse. I am trusting God and I'm leaning on the everlasting arm. Can someone say praise the Lord? I need to have all the money that I need. I need to have all the grocery in my country. I need to have all the influence. I need to have the leverage that other people have. But I have God. And so Let me next. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at someone and say, it depends on your perspective. Come on, say it depends. But let's use another one, your point of view. Hallelujah. Your point of view. See? See? You look at the wrong people, for example. You look at your boss. You look at Bill Gates. Can I preach in this place this morning? We look at, we, we look at some sport hero. We, we, we look at some, someone with athletic prowess. We look at some political genius. Some, some economist. We look at these people. But the word of God says, look at Jesus. He ended at the end. And be saved. These people can't help us. These people can't help us. What, what we need. Sometimes we get rich and we lose our head. Can I speak in this place? We get foolish. God bless us. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. God bless us and allow us to have a little something that your pocket can't hold. Help me, Holy Ghost. Allow us to have the hiccups that your garage can't hold. Help me, Holy Ghost. He's blessed some of us to the point that we have a Sunday vehicle. On a special occasion vehicle, you better behave yourself. You better behave. Look at the person next to you, so you better behave yourself. If that is you, you better behave yourself. Because the same God that allows you to get up is the same God that will move the chair, the floor from under you. And you many years you in the process. Give God a clap of praise.
Thank you, Bishop Thompson. Don't lose your head. Therefore, he said, because these people have an opulent life, and because they are who they are, he says, says, therefore pride and pride composite them about as a chain. Now, think about this. A chain in this, in this context is, is something that restricts you, that ties you down. So he says here, he says here, says, Meadows, these people are so into themselves and into what they have that pride has chained them, even if they try to act differently, they can't act differently. Even if they try to be humble. <laughs> if you hear what I'm saying in this place today, this is the word of God. He says, uh, 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 violence covering them as a garment. The things they say, the things they do, the things they cause to happen. Their eyes stand up with fatness. You, you can just look at them and you can see. You can see success. You know anyone like that? You just they walk in the room and you can see that success. Their eyes, the Bible says, stand out with fatness. They have more than hard wish, or like we would say in the vernacular, you don't know what you have. You're so rich, you don't know what you have. Right? But he gets to the court, he says, they are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. If you ever watch a Christmas carol written by Shakespeare, Charles Dickens, that is Charles Dickens, and the principal character there was Ebenezer Scrooge. Then they told Ebenezer Scrooge about the poor. Ebenezer Scrooge came before me. And they told, when they told Ebenezer Scrooge, he was a very rich, corrupt, miserly man. Then they told him about the poor, the fact that the poor had nothing to eat. He said it. But aren't there poor houses? Aren't there prisons? See, see the contempt? See the contempt? Aren't there prisons? And so, and so, those who were seeking, who were seeking a handout, the poor said, but the prison are full. And the poor houses are full. Are filled. Ebenezer School said, so let them die. See it here? See it here? Thank you, Corey. See it here? They are corrupt. See it? They speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. Foul, arrogant. They set their mouth against the heavens. This, this is very, this, this voice is very, very critical to the remainder of this message. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walked through the earth. That they are so, they are so amongst, they are so, they are so right at bushes. That everybody knows of them. They can't help themselves. They talk about themselves. They, they, they bring attention to themselves. Do you know anybody like that? In any conversation, they find a way to bring the spotlight to themselves. He says so, he says, he says, he says in, in, in this, in, in, he said, this is cause, this is cause for discouragement, as we will see in the passage. So when you look at verse, uh, the, the, the other verse, I think verse 10, it says, therefore, his people will turn hither. His people are the people who consort with him. Does that make sense? And waters of a full cup are wrung out of them. This is a picture of the friends or associates of the wicked. They take, take, Take. They receive, receive, and receive as if there is no end to their increase. The 16th, please. Show me verses 11 to 16, please. What the boy? Yea. I'm sorry. And they say, How did God know? We know our God to be omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. But, but, but they didn't face, they didn't man in the face of a big God. Who oh, is this taller than me? I'm going to show you this. Come here, Captain. She's tall. Beautiful, lovely. Give me a little picture. Give me a picture. Come here. If God 
only had to be nothing else in this message can be with this.
I have cleansed my heart in vain. You see, you, you, you see what's happening here? He got his eyes off God. And he began saying, I've been serving you, Lord. I've been living for you. I've been loving you. Is all that in vain? He says, and I washed my hand, yeah, my hands in innocency. Verse 14. For all the day long have I been blessed and chastened every morning. Show me, Lord, why should I serve you? Show me, Lord, why should I love you? If I say, I must be thus now. This is critical. This is critical. If I say, I must be thus, behold, I shall offend against the generation of my children. Stand with me, please. Stand with me. Stand with me. Stand with me. Guess what they say? I have to suffer in silence that long. Because if I speak it openly, others will be discouraged as a result of what I say. I wonder if you have any. You know what I mean? You don't feel that discouraged because they hear, they hear all the people talking about God. I keep telling people if you have a problem with the church of talk being passed. When you finish talking, let's pray. And if you can write, and if prayer don't help us, then let's pray again. And again. And again. But you have to be careful of this discouragement. You have your bad blood, your bad right? About this one and the next one? Keep it to yourself. Hallelujah. You ought to know better. And this is in my notes. This is in my notes. This is in my notes. Keep it to yourself. This is infection. You don't say this negative stuff, joy, and it's benign. It's malignant. You see, that baby on the side of you, you keep talking negatively. This child knows nothing about nothing. But all of a sudden, she's poisoned because of a dominant environment has spoken negatively into, into her environment. That's the word. Fluent stuff. Oh, we have to be careful. We have to be careful. God is calling us to understand that there is another way to deal with the issues rather than discourage generations. Help me, Holy Ghost. I see people come up here skylarking, jiving. You see no grinning? You see no laughing thing? I stand in the name representing God. I speak as a oracle. Hallelujah. And I
performance. When I contemplate the damage, the collateral damage I will do to others, the thought of what I will do to them, not to others, is too painful for me. See, my little grandson turned one today. One today. Do you remember? We prayed for him. Remember, he was one pound nine ounces? He turned one today. His granddaddy has to be very careful. That I don't poison little man, because if I poison little man, hallelujah, little man will have children one day. And by chance, he would poison his children. It's a generation. See, the little baby here, that's not inconsequential. She represents generations. Now we come to the message. I want to tell someone under the sound of my voice and under the, under the authority of God. Do not allow the present circumstances of the wicked. And the, and the circumstances of the wicked are now enjoying to cause you to stumble and fall. As the children of God, we must be careful not to suffer from what I refer to as low self-esteem. We must know our Father. We must know our Father. We must anticipate and expect that He is looking out for us. He does not leave us to fend for ourselves. And this is demonstrated to me every night when I go to bed. Yeah, when I go to bed, Bishop Christ, Bishop Frank, and Bishop Robin, when I go to bed every night, I go to sleep. Hallelujah. Anticipate and expect 
He's looking well for us. He does not leave us to fend for ourselves. He has a place where he meets and speaks with us as a community of believers. For the skeptic, for the one who will rebuff this sermon and say, yeah, we don't have to come to church to get a word from the Lord. That's not true. That's not true. God can speak to us individually. But then God wants to speak to the community of believers. In the Bible, it's called a sanctuary. In our common vernacular, it's called a church. I am a concern. God don't meet us when the wine is meat. He meet us in the house. Feet set aside. It's where God meets us. When we come in this place, we ask God to take charge of the atmosphere. Right away. When we come in this place and we feel the devil in the place, just a government, we try to know in the name of Jesus Christ. You say, I'm going to stay with what you're on television. Yeah, but you get the penis to eat. Yeah, you're going to the microwave. You 
go to a job, you don't like the boss, you don't like your colleague, they try, they try to do you in. Am I talking to anyone in this place today? They trying to mess you up. They ridiculing you, but everyone you see it right there. And I'm trusting God. I come against this. I come against that. But you want to come in here? Let me hold you close. That's inconsistent. That's inconsistent. Oh God, I know some of you are me, but it's still inconsistent. Give God the praise. Hallelujah. I can't help myself. I feel an anointing on me to talk to God's people and to help us. Yes, sir. Of the righteous, not of the wicked. 
There is something in God's house for his people. You will never experience this if you look like coming here. At times the message may be what you like to hear in other temples. It may not be to your liking. But if it is coming from our Father, he knows what is best for you. I'm going to do this and this is true. Look at Kevin at verse 17. He says, Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I their end. God didn't show them how the wicked would be eliminated, but he understood. Thou didn't set them in slippery places. Remember this word slipped. Remember? He says, You ready was he slippery? Watch until it's going to happen to the wicked. God will set them in slippery places. That's a precarious position to be in. Thou casted them down into destruction. 19. Hallelujah. How are they brought into desolation? As in a moment, they are utterly consumed. Terrorists. This is the prophecy. This is the prophecy Asaph is speaking after coming out of the house of God. What verse 19 says, As a dream, when one awaketh, so Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their interest. The, the, the picture here is, even if Lord, even if you're not mindful of them, when you are stirred to their behavior and their conduct, No longer were his feet The wicked now occupied, as I said, the precarious position. God did not give Asaph any details. Do not pray against people. Don't read no psalm until they now do Bible. Can I say that again? Do not read the psalm and turn the Bible down. This psalm they read and turn the Bible down. Shout out to me. This psalm they read and turn the Bible down. Shout out. This one. Then people say, I am with you. I read Psalm so and so and I turn the Bible down. This psalm that is they read. What's it? Don't let no one ever try to come to war. Don't let your blood pressure go up. Don't let your 
in us and we in him. This is how we want to go into the duration of 2020. All of you has a pain, but also all of him, all of me, to define the more he gives himself to me. That's all about. You know, that was the time to get ready to pray. I need the air.
you said a thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But you also said, I am come that they may have life, that they may have it more abundantly, Lord. Give purpose to living, Lord. Give reason for existence, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare in this place today, Lord, that we are loosed.
that bless you and meet your name. Let us pray. Eternal God, everlasting Father, in the precious name of your Son. We come here, God, this morning, giving you praise and thanks, Lord, as we bring our seed, our gift to you. We thank you, dear God, for prosperity. Lord, we pray, God, to bless your people, Lord, as they stand in this place. Lord, you know every need, Lord, by this financial, their healing, whatever that is, God, we know, God, that you can supply great God. And we know, God, through faith, all things are possible. We come expecting you, dear God, to do the work as your people give faithfully, willingly, cheerfully, with a smile. And we ask you, dear God, to continue, Lord, to allow them to grow and prosper as they continue to be faithful givers and faithful doers of the way of God. Bless us now, in Jesus' name, we pray. Praise Him, and victory is mine. Hallelujah. Come forward at this time as you bring your gift, as you bring your seed offering to the honor and glory of God. We want you to fellowship. We want you to move along. We want you to just worship God in spirit and truth.
now we want our condolences. Um, we'd like to send our condolences to Sisters Monica Moss and Veronica Mins on the recent passing of their brother, James Mackey, who was laid to rest yesterday. Let's please remember their families in our prayers. And then our crusade is completed this past week, but the pastors want to remind us that it does not stop here. You know, worry, disbelief, doubt, and all of the forms of hindrance will have to drive away when we call on the name of Jesus. So we believe and we will continue to press through this year with that week. And then, last but not least, our special family that is with us today. They are my family and the fourth generation of Richard and Sarah Ferguson. So please give this family a round of applause. I'm so glad to see you here today.
to the children of our Lord and Savior. That we must not get caught up with what we see. For we live by faith and not by sight. And we must make our election sure. We all live in a life that we claim that is a godly life. But let me say this to each and every one of you under the sound of my voice. Words can say a lot. It is your action. It is how you live your life. It is the demonstration and the love that is, in, that is inside of us. Because being children of God, we must understand who we were made in His image and His likeness. God is love. And if He is love, we must be love. And we must demonstrate that love each and every day that He blows His breath into our bodies. I say to each and every one of you, make your election sure. In order to do that, read His Word and allow the Holy Spirit to lead and direct your path. Lean not unto your own understanding and allow the Holy Spirit to lead and direct your path. Bishop Allen, as I said last year at the same time, your word, your message for the Holy Spirit did for you to bring forth to this great congregation. I was also there to say what I had to say just now as you were bringing the message. So with that, the Holy Spirit is indeed working along with us. He has us on one accord. Make your election sure. That is the word. You come to church for a word, that is the word. You live in to, to make it into his kingdom. And what some of you may have in you is not going to get into that kingdom. You must get it right. Cleanse yourself. Allow the Holy Spirit to come in. Empty you. Get Holy Spirit. He lead and direct your path. Your election is sure. Hallelujah. I'm done. <laughs> now, I just like to, aside from bringing the reading, so I'd like to acknowledge two birthdays that came up this month. One being John Meadows and one of your own very own Sister Ina May Cox. Um, birthdays being no longer than yesterday, January the 18th and also January the 16th, respectively. So, I know you just had your birthday wishes going out. I'd like to personally say happy birthday to my oldest brother. <laughs> Mary first being, Mary last being. <laughs> and my cousin, cousin Eva May. Now, with that being said, I bring this segment to a close, Bishop Hannah, and now my family of Sarah and Richard, please they ask that you stand with me as I make this presentation. This is from Sarah and Richard, descendants, and it's presented to the great Jumbo Church. <laughs> I just want to respond by saying, as he quoted that scripture, uh, it is to make your calling an election show. Let's be encouraged. This family, I love you a lot. 
know you very, very well and I appreciate you for the guest team. I look forward to you coming next year and uh, we pray that you will stay in the life. Happy birthday, John. Happy birthday, uh, Ine. God bless you. And whatever your age is, you know, five years younger. Every age is in five years ago. Because you stood ten years younger. Thank you. We also want to mention an upcoming South South in aid of Joshua Simonette's educational fund. It's going to be February 1st. That's a Saturday, 7.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. So you can see his mother and make sure you get your tickets to support this wonderful effort. We will now call Sister Janet Rand with an announcement, followed by Pastor Hannah, who will close us out. Good afternoon, my history family, and how are you doing? Oh, you sound like you're tired. I'm doing fine. You're doing fine. Wonderful. I'm here just to host our National Family Life Ministry Appreciation Banquet in honor of Deacon Felton and Sister Eldora Benavy on the 14th of February, 7 p.m. at the National Training Agency, Gladstone Road. And the tickets are $60 per person not $60 per couple, it's $60 per person. And guess what, you do not want to miss the event. Our MC for that evening is for the Will Stubbs and it promised to be an exciting evening. So we have limited tickets left, because we have a call out point. And so I entreat with you, if you're, in, if you're in this service today and you did not receive your ticket, you need to see myself or sister Bernadette Benaby. Um, let us know if you need your ticket, but we have limited tickets left. And so you need to be on the 14th. You don't have to actually plan an event for that particular night. You can come on down at the National Training Agency, Gladstone Road, 7 p.m. Shout. You don't want to miss the event. And the next one is East Street. This is actually East Street Local Family Ministry. We're actually celebrating the month of February, which is Family Summit Month. And during this time, we're gonna actually, I think for the month of February, is celebration of love. And so we want every family member, every individual person. Now, we wanna demonstrate, we wanna see love in action, kindness, appreciation. So we want you to, however the Lord led you to, to bless a family member, or just to bless someone that the Lord led you to. We don't want to know what you give that person, but for the whole month of February, we want you to, to, to celebrate someone, to show kindness. And so you can, we, we call it secret love or something like that, but just to bless someone. You might be led to maybe treat someone maybe for lunch, or give them a voucher, or give them a gas voucher, or however you are led to. Next Sunday um, morning service, we'll have some cards available. We don't, like I said, directors, we don't need to know what you give that person, but we need to know that you're actually blessing someone. And so we're gonna have some cards available next Sunday, the ushers will give them out. And you just could write, you bless someone, or you want to put the family name, that's fine, that's optional, but we just need to have a count that you've been blessing like, your sisters and your brothers in the body of Christ. And so that's for the month of February. And our family Sunday month is June the 23rd. And our theme is love one another for that Sunday morning. And on the 28th, which is Friday, the 28th, will be our family round table discussion. For the month of February, Bible study, you, you cannot miss Bible study because we have some very exciting topics to be discussed. And so you must come up to Bible study as well. And so please, family of Easter, You've always been a great support. You know we love you, we appreciate you, and we bless the Lord for East Street family members. And I tell you, God is just so awesome. And you need to give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you. Very good day, just before you leave, I appreciate our Chief Magistrate. God bless you, love you, we appreciate you. I want we close, I ask uh, two of you to come and 
heaven. And uh, I try to be spontaneous when the Spirit is speaking to me. Now, Antonio Han, his mother and father, and his mother is there today. And, um, but he's part of his family. This Sarah and Robert Ferguson family. So that's a legacy. That's, that's, that's the legend they passed on. The reason why Richard is the reason why I asked him to come to a Kevin and open up this point. Something is happening here. Luke Kennedy went off to school. And uh, Mansur Roberts and some man Kevin went off to a dinner. And Durban went off to school in the last two weeks or so. And so, Antonio now is the person who is in the study of So I said to him, I said, now, I am a pastor of time. I want you to be up on time. And then young man look at me and say, you know, Pastor, you know I know a car. You know I got a pair of my parents. So I said to him, I said, talk to you about any daddy. And you have stepped up into the leadership now. So I want them to bring you to church on time. They gotta go back home and cook chicken or whatever. And I want Lisa, to tell Antonio, my family, and I want this young man in church time. So it's what you say. <laughs> my name, my name is Paul if I talk like that. We try to teach him discipline. Alright? Okay. Because then they come late and they look at me, they quickly look at me because the look is not pleasant and they come late. Please sir. Please sir. God bless you. Give him a hand clap again. He's learning his songs, he's learning his way around the technology. Praise God from home, all blessings flow.